In this short video, I wanted to discuss heat treating flint. Now this is a way that you can increase the workability of tough grainy stone. For you crusty old flint nappers like myself, this is going to be old hat. But for you newbies out there, this is going to be important. This is going to be a way to expand the usability of the stone resources that you may be able to find. Now heat treating was done in prehistoric times. They have actually found old hearths, old fireplaces where, and fire pits where they have blanks of flint that were actually buried underneath the fire. Now heat treating flint can actually have some pretty dramatic results. Here's one I wanted to show you. This is a piece of Texas flint. If you look really closely here on this one side, you can see where it's actually got a dull luster to it. It's not very reflective. It's a little more gritty and grainy. But on this other side where I've taken a flake off of it, you can see that it's got much more of a waxy reflective luster. And that is the effect of heat treating. So this piece of stone was heat treated in my kiln and then I knocked a flake off this one side and there you can see the difference. Now here are two flakes of Texas flint that uh, the one on the right is the raw stone. You can see it's a tan color and then the one on the left is you can see the color change in it. It's a little bit darker. It turned it into a little more pinkish color. You can see the color change there. Sometimes the color change is subtle. Other times it can be pretty dramatic. Here's a piece of Coastal Plains chert from South Georgia. If you look closely, you can see the yellow, yellowish brown speckling pattern in there. And then, Here's an arrowhead that I made out of this exact same piece of stone, only this stone was heat treated. You can see the dramatic color change. All the yellow speckles have now turned a brilliant red. And uh, it almost doesn't even look like the same stone. You can see that it, the, it does have the same color pattern and speckling, but the, the color change is much, much more dramatic in the finish point. Now the only drawback to this is that this uh, heat treated stone is not quite as durable. So what I like to do when I heat treat my flint is I take it down, take it to a temperature where the workability is increased, but it's not so weak and glassy and brittle that it just doesn't hold up. So I like to get that nice happy medium, increase the workability, but still maintain some strength and some toughness to the stone. For this video, I'll heat treat this bag full of Texas flint flakes. It's best to cook flint that all changes at the same temperature for maximum results and maximum efficiency. Tougher, grainier flint requires higher temperatures to improve its workability, though the exact temperature will require trial and error on your part. Most flint changes between 400 and 450 degrees Fahrenheit on average, though some will require more heat. To heat treat my flint, I prefer to use a low temperature kiln. This gives me maximum control and minimizes waste and breakage. First, I carefully fill it with flint flakes. The flint I'm loading into the kiln can be worked raw, but I prefer to cook it so that workability and sharpness is improved somewhat. Good flint is a limited resource and I embrace using modern conveniences like a kiln to maximize results and minimize waste. Once the kiln is full, I place the top on it, then put a thermometer in it so I can get a precise temperature reading inside the kiln. This ensures maximum results and control. The temperature controller on this kiln is designed to heat up slowly, so I first turn the dial to a setting of around 200 degrees to gently warm the stone. This takes about two hours. Once it reaches 200 degrees, I then turn the dial up to increase the heat. I again leave it to slowly climb in temperature. A few hours later, the thermometer shows that the temperature inside the kiln is 370 degrees, just 30 degrees shy of the target temperature of 400 degrees I want this kiln to reach. Once the kiln hits 400 degrees, I hold it there for about two hours before turning the dial down in increments until the stone has slowly and completely cooled. With the stone completely cooled, it's now time to open the kiln and inspect the stone. 
All of the flakes are intact and there's no cracked or shattered stone. This heat treating session was a success. If the stone cools or heats up too quickly, the stone will shatter. The same will happen if the stone gets too hot, so be sure to heat and cool your stone slowly so there's no breakage. So I got the flint out of the kiln and it looks great. You can definitely see a little bit of a color change on some of this stone that was originally tan, now it's turned pink. Um, the only failure, if you want to call it that, was we had this one piece that was close to one of the heating elements and it caused this dished out fracture, but really isn't too much of a problem. I can just chip around that and still make a point out of it. That's the reason why I like using the kilns, because you get very precise control, which I could never duplicate whenever I was trying to heat treat underneath the fire. So I'm going to take a few flakes off these pieces and just see how they work. Oh yeah, can really tell a difference at first hit. I can feel how smooth that is too in that flake scar. So much easier than it was before. Well that flint really turned out nice. You can see the glossiness of it right there as I turn it in the light. Really increase the workability of this stuff too and makes it super sharp, but not too weak. So it still maintains a good bit of strength, makes great hunting points with wickedly sharp edges. These finish points show the beautiful colors that heat-treated flint exhibits. glassy, finer workability will allow you to make finer, more exquisite arrowheads like these small but extremely fine Gunther barbed points.